Um, I just want to talk about how we case finish. Uh, young Susan has come in today to check whether she's ready for her braces to come off. And a couple of things I want to show you here. Because of the deep bite that Susan started with, if you look, just lift your chin up, Susan, we have bite turbos. And the bite turbos um, protect the lower brackets from debonding so that we can get the ideal finishing. But the main thing I want to talk about here is molar rotation. Can you open really wide? If you look at the 1.6 to the 1.7, can you see what we mean by in-out? The rotation of the 6 to the 7 could be caused by the molar tube being too mesial or too distal, or it could be caused by excessive in-out in the molar tubes. And if you see the same on this side, you can see the 2.6 to the 2.7. We would want to do either one of three things. You could do a first order bend, mesial of that molar tube, that would rotate it to match the seven. You could take that molar tube off and put another molar tube, or you can position that molar tube more distal. So three tips for you. Now this is where Susan started. You see how she had 100% overbite and she was very div two, high canine occlusal cant. Can you see six and seven are a good alignment? So you've got to really watch where you bond your molar tube so you finish with them being in a good rotational control. Now, where should you bond a, uh, a molar tube? If you draw an imaginary line through your mesobuccal cusp, the opening of the molar tube should be on that line, right? That's the good position for a molar tube when it comes to mesiodistal. When it comes to the vertical, it depends on the malocclusion. Here, this young lady has a deep bite, so I'm going to bond that more gingival, so I get molar extrusion. If it was an open bite, I'd put that molar tube more occlusal. But whether I put it there or there, the rotational control is based on the thing. Now, I use Ormco molar tubes, so it's easy for me. They have a little groove here, so I can then pop that straight onto the groove, and most times we get it right. But as the case you just saw, um, when you have abnormal anatomy on the tooth, always use that line. And I'll draw it again here for you on the lower. So if you have that as an imaginary line through your mesobuccal cusp, the molar tube should have its opening at that line. Not the mesh pad, but the actual opening of the molar tube. Okay.